Live from Studio A, somewhere inside the great state of Kansas, it's Leadership Late Night brought to you by the Kansas Leadership Center. I'm DJ AJ, here to rock the beats and in the market for my next gig. Hit me up on the TikTok. Joining my dad on tonight's show, the president and CEO of the Kansas Leadership Center, Ed O'Malley. Now, your host, my dad, and a man who could really use a vacation, DJ Wetter. Good evening, everyone, and welcome, as always, to Leadership Late Night. Well, as DJ AJ alluded to in the intro, we will be wrapping up Season 1 tonight. And we'll let the times dictate the how, when, what of Season 2 here on Leadership Late Night. Tonight's going to be about looking back looking back on an experiment that started 13 weeks and 17 episodes ago. And it's been an amazing time for our family. In classic KLC fashion, this all started as an experiment. As we sat in a staff meeting virtually for, you know, some of the first days of this pandemic, trying to figure out how to make leadership development happen in these times, one of the ideas that was suggested is we need a later in the evening option for people to connect to virtually. I volunteered for that shift. I pitched a late night style show and also in KLC fashion, nobody said no. And here we sit. This show has been a regular part of my family's week now, as I mentioned, for 13 weeks, 17 shows. And I know for some of you watching, it's been a regular part of your week as well. And I'm so thankful for that because it's just been uh, the best experience, especially for my two kiddos. Uh, One of the traditions in the Wetter household is at the dinner table most nights, we do our highs, our lows, and our sillies. And as you can imagine, those are pretty self-explanatory, but we talk about the best things, the worst things, and the funniest things of the day. So to wrap up season one, I thought it would be great to sit down Addison and Parker and ask him for their highs, lows, and sillies from season one. Take a look. My high was eating all the candy on the show. I'll take your silence as a payment. I think we made a big breakthrough here. Great work, sis. Really? With the snacks again? I'm hungry. My low is that time when he didn't let me eat on the show. What are you eating? Starburst. Buddy, I need you to ditch the snacks if you're going to be an announcer. Seriously? No snacks. Stand up straight. You got this. Let's go. No food. And I got the stand up. Addison! I gotta go, guys. The show needs me. My silly is some words in the script you write. It's really hard to say. Celebrities. Celebrity. Celebrity. Celebrities. 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 Nailed it. My eye is helping people learn leadership in a funny way. That's one interpretation. Well, Another interpretation is that some people are here only for the free food. Are you coaching me right now? Who needs multiple interpretations when we nail it on the first one? Great job. You're mad! But it just might work. (sighs) Oh well, any thoughts on the show? Not really. We'll just wing it as usual. Milo is that we're taking a break. What's up? We're on live TV right now, and I'm without an announcer and a DJ. Where are you? Is that little show tonight? Sorry, Dad. I'm just super busy. With what? Between fan mail and people trying to interview me. I'm swamped. I'm just trying to find time for me. You know what I mean? How are the grapes? A little more ripe than I prefer, but I'm managing. And my silly is that we made a super long fake microphone. So can you guys show me how you'll talk into the microphone? And a super long fake microphone. (laughs) Hi! Thanks for being on the show!
Well, DJ AJ Parker, it has been so fun doing season one with you. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. Yeah, I loved helping you on the show. It was really fun, especially because a lot of people liked me. Always right on brand with you two. Well, we've got a great episode 17 for you. The audience has been clamoring for an appearance from the president and CEO of the Kansas Leadership Center, Ed O'Malley. And tonight, we finally got him on Leadership Late Night. Stay tuned for that interview. But first, DJ AJ, I'll hit the desk and you hit the beats. We got it, Dad. All right, back here at the desk and ready to rock and roll. We're going to get to Ed in just a few seconds. I want to get right to that interview tonight. We'll have a couple of fun segments at the end to uh, wrap up the show. As always, we're going to have our uh, after show. Uh, we'll wrap it up tonight with a little bit of fun. So for those of you who have been a part of it over the, the last few weeks, join us. And if you haven't been a part of it before, why not join in now, right? Check it out. Uh, I encourage you to grab your uh, favorite beverage and uh, join us in the after party on Zoom, Julian Montez. So I want to give a big thanks right off the top to He's been with me every episode. So uh, I committed to doing this. He uh, probably got stuck with me, but he is an amazing tech guru who supported us in so many ways, giving up his evenings uh, every week, back in the day, twice a week. And so just very thankful for Julian and all he's done for the show and wanted to give him a special shout out at the uh, top of the show tonight. A couple other brief thoughts before we get to Ed. One, uh, my son Parker does own other colored shirts other than blue, although putting together uh, that package today, I was cracking up. He's always wearing the same shirt, and Addy loves the tie-dye. So I think there's something uh, beautiful about that, but it's funny how though that was kind of their Thursday wardrobe. And uh, honestly, when I told them we were going to take a break for a little while, there was disappointment here. So uh, it's been a lot of work, but a real blessing for my family, and thanks for those who have joined along the way to uh, make this show possible. And I hope those of you who can manage to join tonight uh, we'll consider jumping into the after party for just a few minutes for our final discussion of season one. Well, to get the discussion underway, what are we going to talk about? We're going to bring out Ed O'Malley. Uh, many of you on watching tonight, as I see the comments start to roll in, know Ed well, our president and CEO of the Kansas Leadership Center. Um, he's been here from the start. He understands what it means to uh, build a leadership framework and to go out and be a part of a listening process. That's how this all got underway. And we're in the midst of of doing that again. Uh, this time of COVID-19, now throw on top of this, this time of social unrest, this time of uh, a social justice movement, a time of understanding what it means to dismantle racism, um, calls for organizations to respond. And that's certainly always been something that Ed is always about. So with that in mind uh, and that framework, I encourage you to uh, sit back and enjoy the Leadership Library with Ed O'Malley. Ed O'Malley, we, we've waited a long time, but finally, welcome to the Leadership Library. It, it took a lot to get a hold of your people, connect them to my people, but you're finally here, so thanks for joining us. Hey, you saved the least for last. I'm happy not, to be here. <laughs> not true at all. Every week I call and every week I'm ignored, but finally, we're not, that's <laughs> that not, is not true. That's that is not true. And uh, this is, I mean, to be here with you, DJ, in the Leadership Library, I mean, it is, you know, one of the highlights of... <laughs> my career or of today i don't know but either way it's been awesome <laughs> and those improv classes you took back in the day are really paying off right now as you uh, just <laughs> smiled through that and seemed very sincere but i'm going to take that as sincere i appreciate that so by all means that that leads me into question one as the ceo of klc what were you thinking when this idea of a late show was proposed and you said yes i i just think it's a crazy idea and i think organizations need to do crazy ideas you know i think the you know this has been so fun and watching you do this seeing the guests on here hearing people talk about it it has just been an awesome example dj frankly of your creativity and of what can happen when you kind of like wipe the slate clean and you just think about like what can we do right. so when i heard the idea i remember I, we were in the um the flint hills room of the kansas leadership center before we all started working remotely and somebody it was you or somebody else brought up this idea of a late night show and it just seemed like a freaking cool experiment yeah. and i remember what went through my head was well, like what could go wrong <laughs> you know i mean it, it it's gonna be probably fun it could be really neat it could take us to really neat places 
and what could go wrong? Let's do it. Look, that idea of experimentation was, you know, new to me seven years ago now as I first came to KLC. Um, we're living in strange times, Ed. We're, we're living in times where we're dealing with a pandemic. We're dealing with uh, a lot of people coming to terms with uh, the social impacts of systemic racism, so much going on. But we, we actually just look back and we've been documenting. It's been a hundred days since kind of work changed for KLC and we've been doing this work from home thing. As the CEO, as you reflect back, what, what strikes you about these last 100 days in terms of this organization and just your life? Well, first of all, uh, I, I think it's important to note how fortunate we are that we've been able to work from home. Yeah. And I mean, that's been on my mind a lot. There, there are a whole lot of people in this country and in this world who don't have that opportunity. And so I felt very thankful that we can do our work in a remote fashion. And I, I think that is a great kind of case in point for a lot of what's happening right now with the pandemic and uh, with social unrest in our, in our nation. Um, th this idea of the divisions that are so deep that many of us might not even be fully aware that they're there. But like the division around those who could stay home and those who had no choice but had to go to work. Uh, that's pretty significant. And, um, but it's been a hundred days and I'm so proud of our team. Uh, I'm, I'm proud, two, two things come to mind. I think every organization should be going through these same two things that we've gone through. Number one, that first pivot. You know, back in mid-March, we realized, you know, the world is shifting underneath our feet. The ground is shifting underneath our feet. And I was so proud of the KLC team for quickly pivoting and getting so much online. And we've had 3,000 participants in our online offerings now. We never would have done that. You know, we never would have had that happen. So I'm so proud for the team to react that quickly. And I'm also so proud for the team for saying, but there's probably more we're gonna to have to change. Uh, this pandemic is, is gonna last longer. The, the context around it is gonna last longer. The, the, the world has literally changed and we need to think about the language we use, as you know, DJ, internally is what's our second pivot. I'm really proud of the team for not being satisfied with the first pivot and, and, and heading into a second pivot also. And I hate the word pivot, I'm so sick of that word but I don't have a better one. So a lot, a lot of pride in the team, um, a lot of appreciation for working with this organization and a lot of just in awe of watching people, including you know you in the show, watching people be creative and doing things that are really extraordinary and a lot of fun too. You've made a comment to our staff before and you made it again today that the original framework at KLC was, was crowdsourced. It was about yeah. going out and listening. Um, we're in that process again now, thanks to is we both laugh about using the word pivot, but there isn't a, we can crowdsource a better word on this show. We'll try that tonight. That's right. Yeah, we need a better on. word for pivot, everybody. If nothing <laughs> right. else comes out of tonight, you yeah. know, give us a better word for pivot. Pivot's the new synergy for sure. But we, we, we know this, that, that there is wisdom in the crowd, as you've said, I'm stealing that line from you. And so the work right now, um, would you talk about what KLC has been up to and what you've been up to around trying to listen again, given the, the moment of time we're in? I'm so proud of what's been done at KLC over the, the last almost 14 years. And I think it's so important that we don't assume we actually have everything figured out. Yeah. And when we began to realize by about early April, we began to realize that you know, this is a six month, 12 month, 18 month, 24 month, decade long type transition. When we think about the economic impact of what we're all experiencing and that we need to rethink, we need to really ask ourselves, are we, best situated to respond and be helpful. So we did what we did at the beginning of KLC. We started listening again. We've launched a, another version of what we call an artifact process. So 13 years ago, we did a process to create the artifact, which gave us our founding and gave us our, our foundation. Um, and we're doing a similar thing now. And DJ, there's so much power when you listen to people, when you ask good questions that are open-ended, and you really listen and you, you analyze what you hear. I mean, things emerge that uh, are powerful. And so that, that crowdsourcing type approach, and I'm not saying we always do it perfectly, and I'm not saying there aren't better examples of crowdsourced efforts in the world, but I'm really proud that we started by listening to the voices of Kansans and we're doing that again now. And we know when to bring in expertise to help us, but the, the foundation is with 
listening to Kansans and adjusting what we're doing based on what we're learning from them. Yeah, lean into that preliminary data just a little bit for us. I was struck today by this idea that three fourths of what makes progress hard right yeah. now, according to those you listen to, existed before the pandemic ever happened. I thought that was yeah. a nugget that stood out to me. As you lean in and just start to make sense of the data, what's popping out to you? You know, a lot of really neat data. That that point I think is a really really good good one. Um, and and also, I can't remember the exact percentage. I think it might be something like sixty percent of the things that help make progress pre-existed before the pandemic too. So in a lot of ways, the, the data from this listening process is suggesting to us, if you create a good culture, you create a good culture of a lot of people who know how to exercise leadership, you can weather a pandemic. Create a good culture, create good social capital among diverse groups in your organization, your institution, your community, your state, and you can turn perhaps this moment of social unrest into a moment of transformative change that we need in our society. So, so but you have to have those things in place. And if you wait for the pandemic, just like we know that we should have been stockpiling PPE, if we would have listened to the pandemic experts, they, they, could, they could predict that this was going to happen and we should stockpile more supplies, right? That's what they knew, but we didn't listen. It's also true that we should be stockpiling social capital. We should be stockpiling civic engagement. We should be developing systems and infrastructure and connections that will make, frankly, the next response to a pandemic or the next response to social unrest more productive. So it's really interesting. Again, some of these things we know intuitively, other things you need people to help point out as you listen to them. And uh, I'm proud of KLC, but I, I don't think we'll ever have this perfectly. So I'm excited to see what emerges from this listening and what we change in our effort because of it. Knowing that at some point there will be an other side to where we're at right now. And some of that work is what can we capture right now that, that, we, that we remember and actually allows us to make progress. As you think about that, that weird trap and all this work that someday it may go back to quote unquote normal. Um, what does that work feel like? And what, what things do you think about there? My instincts are it's never gonna go back to normal. Uh, my instincts are it's, it, it's too big of a change. It's too big of a, of a shift. You know, people when World War II was over, life didn't go back to what life was like before World War II. You know, life became something totally different. Like the war was over, but life wasn't what it was before. So I think that's what it will be like when the world is done with the coronavirus and all the associated economic situation that it has caused. I think there'll be um, a whole new reality that will have elements of our old reality and all kinds of new elements that we can't even predict. I think it's actually an incredibly exciting time. I'm very bullish on the future. I'm sad and frustrated about the human toll and the economic toll. And I think those things go together, by the way. Um, that you know, they, we, we know the biggest determinant of your health is your economic status. So it's not like you care about health or you care about the economy, they're together. But I'm sad about what's happening there, but I'm also very bullish on the future. I, I, I think there's a lot of hope and optimism. And in some ways the pandemic is elevating the heat to use our language. And we're perhaps gonna be able to be in a productive zone of some real change for quite a while, I hope. Yeah, and Ed, now organizationally, just as we think about the work that KLC has to do and the role we have to play, it, it's, it's not all KLC's work uh, to do everything, but we know we need to be present in it, um, in the civic engagement related to the pandemic, related to dismantling systemic racism. And so leave us here as you think about the future of this organization. And we know very well that involves staff and contractors, but the yeah. alums and people we haven't even met yet, as you think about yeah. that, um, where, where, where do you see us headed? Where, uh, what, what feels like uh, important things to consider as we think about the near future for this organization? We owe it to our alums. We owe it to the state of Kansas. Frankly, we owe it to the people back in 1918 who struggled to build a hospital, having no idea that a hospital would be sold someday, a foundation would be created, the Kansas Health Foundation. That health foundation would invest in a leadership center. We owe it to those Kansans all the way back in 1918 to make sure that we keep pushing in the state to be an entity that, that really takes the approach that gets results. You know, I, I don't think the world needs more people who are just 
strong advocates. The world needs more people who can advocate for a stronger civic culture and can get results through that advocacy. And KLC has to practice the very things we preach. So my hope is that the vote, people viewing this will see the Kansas Leadership Center in now and into the future as an organization that mobilizes people to literally get results. We won't always do it perfectly. We'll keep making mistakes, but we'll make those mistakes as we're pushing ourselves and we're trying to learn. I hope folks will see that for forevermore in the Leadership Center. Um, it, 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 it's a pain when you gotta practice the very ideas that you teach, but we have to and we will. Ed O'Malley, you are off the hot seat. Thank you for joining us oh. at the Leadership Library. <laughs> Uh, it's great to be with you, DJ. Thanks for the opportunity and thanks for taking a risk to create this show and having a lot of fun with it and doing good things for KLC. Well, great conversation there. And a big thanks to Ed for uh, taking the time out to join me. And I need to name that uh, he was up for an interview anytime and uh, was very thankful. I thought it was a fitting way to end season one and just uh, very thankful for his support and the work of the Kansas Leadership Center. And look, he named it. This is not about a puff piece about the organization I work for. Um, but what it is about is we ought to be learning from each other what is working and what is not working. I see some comments already about that. What are we paying attention to and what are we not paying attention to? And frankly, I'm proud to be part of an organization that is paying attention in a different way right now to the work. Um, I think Personally, there have been times where we have, as an organization, tried to think about what the work is and what the work isn't for us and, uh, you know, settled in a different path. This time is different. Given the pandemic, given the social unrest, uh, I'm really proud to be a part of this organization. I'm proud of what's taking place. And I'm seeing this stockpiling of social capital, as Ed put it, the stockpiling of social capital paying off. And that reminder that we can stockpile social capital. In other words, I think it's another way of saying you literally have to build up in trust, right? With trustworthy process. You don't have to trust everybody involved, but you do have to build up and at times spend some social capital somewhere along the way when you're going to raise the heat, when you're going to intervene. So I don't always like to conflate this with trustworthy process, but I do like to call us, uh, call to attention this idea that you've got to build up some capital. And Ed says this a lot. And then know when you're going to spend that capital, take a risk, maybe intervene and not do it so skillfully, but trust that there's enough capital in the room to do that. The other side of that coin is you've got to recognize when new partners are needed, when new connections need to be made, when we need to understand others who we don't think value what we value or aren't loyal to what we're loyal to. Uh, I'm really struck by that. I know it was uh, like eight days ago now, but many of you may have seen on Facebook, um, that a uh, couple that was dining in a restaurant and waiting to travel to the airport uh, happened to be two black uh, women and they left a note for a police officer that said black lives matter and your life matters too. And that is the kind of third way thinking we need in this country right now. That we can say the phrase black lives matter and we can understand that what that phrase does is it calls out that a segment of this population that calls itself citizens that is that our citizens have never been treated equally in this country. All right. That's just facts, folks. That's just facts. And so that we can call that out and that it's OK. But we can also recognize that we're going to have to figure out something when it comes to our communities and policing. Both those things can be true at the same time. And I'm really getting sick and tired in this uh, day and age that we can't hold up multiple perspectives at once. I'm not perfect at it. I fail at it a lot. Um, you ask my family. All right, ask my family, but I'm trying and I'm struck by a quote. I always think of back to a quote. Uh, one of my favorite authors, Rob Bell said, your evolution is taking a while. All right. And the reminder there is I, I'm on a journey. I like to think I'm super enlightened or woke or whatever the word is we should use today. I know I'm not. I got a long way to go. In fact, uh, I got a lot to realize what I don't know, where I fall short. Um, and, and that's work. And for others, the evolution is taking a while as well. So I hope that we can recognize this journey that we're all on right now. And uh, if anything, this show has taught me personally. Some of you have come on the journey with me, and I'm thankful for that. But it's always amazing how you do this work, and it, it affects you. And uh, I'm glad others hopefully came on the journey. But each guest along the way, just the beautiful reminders that will stick with me for a lifetime, uh, thinking back to uh, what I've learned along the way. It's been a, 
a really neat journey. And I'm so glad that so many of you have joined us along the way. And I'm thankful for this organization for giving us a chance uh, to try this out. Want to uh, throw out a few of your comments tonight, so be sure to get those comments in. Um, not any new articles up on the journal. Just want to mention that real quick. I want to throw up a slide and remind you to always check out the KLC Journal. It's kind of the print and online version. Um, it does it a much better job of what I'm trying to do here to share stories about leadership. But they are working on some stories coming up that you're going to want to pay attention to that website right there, klcjournal.com. Stay tuned in the coming weeks because the work they are doing right now and what's about to be unveiled is something uh, KLC um, has really been working hard on. Again, Chris Green is his staff, and I just want to encourage you all to go there, as always, to check out klcjournal.com. Uh, I want to thank Stan Stephanie Sanford, a uh, good friend, uh, for always being on tonight uh, and joining us and saying that KLC truly listens to diverse voices. I hope that's correct, Stephanie. I've heard you say that about this organization before. I'm proud of that fact, and I hope we continue to do that. Um, and thank you for all the work you're doing as well. We really value and love being partners with your organization. Uh, Debbie Bettis weighing in tonight. That's my amazing mother-in-law who's always watching. So thankful for her uh, in my life and my uh, kiddos' lives. And she's the only one to recommend another phrase besides pivot. So, uh, Ed, we're stuck with second pivot at this point. She went with swivel. Swivel's not bad. Uh, that, I think that might get old real quick too, though. The second swivel, I don't know. We might get some laughs, but thank, and she says, ha ha, by the way, but thank you for giving us, uh, another option there. Robin Eubanks Callis laid the groundwork and the efforts are rewarded in moments of crisis. It's a real lesson of this time that if you lay the ground, the work has to be done prior to the work really does. And Jeff calling us to a tougher interpretation, not easy to say now that we should have listened to experts and done X or Y, but getting underneath why those things didn't happen seems the more important work. What fears and or losses were being avoided that prevented those recommendations from being adopted? And Amy uh, jumps back in and says, Jeff, or what other priorities were people focused on? I think that's so well said by both of you. Uh, should have done more. I'm, I'm just going to name that fact. We, we had some facts that suggested we, we should have been ready as a country. And there's a lot of systemic factors going on, folks, that got in the way of that. And we better ask ourselves some tough questions. Some of the questions we'll have to ask ourselves ought to uh, cause us at least to ponder how we will engage in a 2020 election. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. It ought to cause us to ponder how we'll engage. And you can take that a number of different ways. All right. That, that's as far as I'll go tonight. But we need to think about those things because voting is one of those ways where we'll be civically engaged. But it's not the only way and it's not enough. Okay, so vote and dot, dot, dot. We've got to figure out that and of what's next for us. Uh, as community members, as uh, those who engage in nonprofits, those who engage in communities of faith, we've got to do more and be engaged. So I appreciate you calling that up. Um, Roger, joining us most nights. Roger, always great to have you. I've looked forward to late night every Thursday. It was fun, but I also appreciated the topics. They were also relevant. Thank you. And getting some nice uh, comments here. I appreciate that greatly. Humans have opposable minds for a purpose from Lori Alvarado. I'm going to end us on that one tonight. That's beautiful. And uh, I think it's a great way to end season one. So one more time, thank you to all of you for uh, joining us, for being with us. I hope some of you will join us in the Zoom room for a few minutes of conversation to wrap up this season. And in the meantime, uh, DJ AJ Parker and myself wanted to have a little extra fun on the way out. So you're getting moments of hope with a little bonus tonight. Uh, and as always, we end season one. I got to say it. Good night, kiddos. Love you a lot. It's been a lot of fun doing this show with you. Good night. Good night, Dad. And now, a few more bloopers and your moments of hope. Hey, hey, hey. Stay chill. We're at the Tepfer house. Matt and Mama. Oh, start over. Matt and Mama. Matt, Matt and Mama. Go. One more time. She's grown complacent. He's grown complacent. Complacent. Can you go? Do that one more time. She's grown, she's grown compassion. Look, Dad, here's one for you. She's grown complacent. She's grown complacent. Why are you like mushing your <laughs> words together? Oh, look, Dad, here's one for you. Camera, I'm not here. Uh, Dad. We want to manage your TikTok count for the show. Back up. I said okay. account. Yeah, I said account. account. You said count.
You can't learn your letters. <laughs> She's growing compression. Dad, no one's thinking you look more muscular. Muscular. I know, it's hard work. Yes, it will be straight fire. Perfect. She's grown complacent. Perfect. Sophie's not sure, but the other guys are doing well. Yeah. It's a pretty good putt. That's a great putt. Yeah!